last couple of weeks we've been dealing um, with the kingdom uh, uh, and and the thing to put on display. I talked about the Trinity of Trinities, and I talked about a lot of things. Now, I I I hope it's been useful. If you've got any questions, please do let me know. Allow me to share the link. I know there are people who are waiting for this link. Uh, apologies, I'm not coming to you from my usual um, HQ, but I hope the lighting is sufficient. This is the best place I could find to sit. Uh -huh. So copy link. Where do I copy link? We need to stop doing this uh -huh. so that we can have... Um, proper meeting. Uh, yes. All right, so here we are again. Uh, um, I want to uh, Okay. So Let's let's talk. Uh, hi, Doreen Brady. How are you? Uh, pleasure. Um, so let's get this show on the road. Okay. Now I I I, I want to discuss uh, something of the promises of God uh, that we've read. And one of the promises, and and for me, I'm very keen. Let me, let me tell you what what I'm about. What's what's bugging me now? What's on my mind? And how come it's it's really driving me up the wall? What what's on my mind is this. It's a fact that many Christians live a very lackluster life. Okay, uh, uh, um, whether it is quality of life in terms of relationships, quality of life in terms of wealth, uh, quality of life in terms of achieving purpose, which is self-actualization. Whichever matrix, hey, Bona Ian, how are you? Whichever matrix you want to use uh, to judge most Christians, you will find that they fall short. Now, last Saturday, we had a very interesting conversation on, on the book of Peter and how you should add to virtue, to knowledge, etc., etc. And, mm -hmm. and, and we're talking about how this will keep you from being unproductive in your knowledge of God. And, and I, allow me to, to first describe unproductiveness. Unproductiveness, in, in my view, is not the lack of resources or the lack of, of, of things. I think unproductiveness is when you are unable to pursue the dreams, hopes, and ambitions that you have um, in the speed and in the space of time that you would have hoped to. So, uh, what I mean by that is this: that if you if you you are living in a state where uh, the promises of 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 life that God has given you remain permanently out of reach, then you're missing the point. Whether that is in your marriage, it is in your finances, it is in your pursuit of purpose, whichever pursuit you want to, to use, um, uh, whichever pursuit you want to follow, if you are not achieving it, then you're being fruitless, uh, you're being uh, 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 un unusable. And, and for me, this is my biggest issue about the unusableness of, of people. It, it's, it's the fact that it shames our God completely. It, it makes uh, a mockery and a shame of our God. And we get to a point uh, 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 um, uh, um, where, where we are living in such horrible lives, living such horrible lives, that God is embarrassed. And so I want to start where we left off Bible study. I want to go to Second Peter. Uh, sorry, my application is hanging. Um, so this, this is my issue, right? That a lot of Christians can claim to be sinless, and I, 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 uh, I, I repeat this claim on sick, uh, sinless because I think every person who claims to be sinless is a liar and has not really... Uh, found God, uh, 
because one of the things you do is when you find God, is you look at his perfection and you look at his imperfections and you realize that you are not you are not you are not the kind of person that he expects you to be i think in every interaction i've had with god i've felt very embarrassed because when i look into his godliness into his perfection into his holiness i realize how weak and unworthy i am which is the the good news of the gospel that then this 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 unworthy human is counted worthy because the god of heaven uh, chose to send his son to die for him and and that's 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 good news that's a gospel agreed uh, but there are many things once we get into the gospel once you're forgiven of sin because i don't think the difference between christians and everybody else is the fact that they are sinless i think it's a fact that they have a spirit in them that is better than the others like it says of joshua and caleb that they had a different spirit they had a conquering spirit they had a spirit that saw what god saw and understood what god was saying i don't think uh, the difference is how nice we are and that's why i have a big problem uh, with people who who continually want to bring up this 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 gospel this ideology that somehow they are better than other people i don't think that 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 is 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 it so i want to start my story and i want to talk about uh, uh grace all right now uh second peter 1 and verse 2 uh, uh, may, the, may grace, God's favor, and peace, which is uh, perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity and freedom from fears and agitations, passions and moral conflicts. I, I, I just want you to, to, to understand what it's saying. That the, uh, Peter, in saluting uh, the church, uh, speaks of the church and he says, may grace, God's favor, and therefore, we expect that if you're a member of the Ecclesia, then God's favor is part and parcel of who you are, uh, which, uh, and peace. Uh, let us define peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears, from fears, and agitating passions and moral conflicts, all right? be multiplied to you in the full personal precise and correct knowledge of god and of jesus our lord now what is peter talking about he's talking about that grace needs to be multiplied peace needs to be multiplied and increased how through the precise personal and full and correct knowledge of god and our lord jesus christ this is very critical that we must get to the point has sasabro we must get to the point that our knowledge of god brings us to what to peace and to grace and what is grace god's favor that you live a life full of god's favor that that, that you know that you know that god's hand is on you and 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 and, and his peace which is perfect well being perfect well being all necessary good all spiritual prosperity and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflict. I do not think there is even 10% of us who can claim to have peace or even 10% of us who can say that the, the grace that we experience in our lives has given us favor. Now, uh, 2 Peter 1, 3, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godly living, godliness, through the full and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory, excellence, and excellence, which the uh, uh, Amplified here calls virtue. Now, I want you to pause and think about it. And this is a, a, a obviously a scripture that has been talked to you before uh, about divine power has given us everything we need for life and godly living. Now, usually when this is quoted, they quote only that part where it says the divine power has, he has given us divine power for life and godly living. And that's where we leave it. We leave it at, at that point. Now, it says through, there's a process, the full knowledge of him 
who called us to his own glory and excellence and virtue. I put it to you, gentlemen, therefore, if you do not know God and you do not personally know him and he has not revealed himself to him, all right, uh, to, to us, uh, then our knowledge is limited. And for as far as our knowledge is limited, this divine power, these uh, promises that he has given us remain out of reach. Uh, twice now, Peter has talked about knowledge of him, the knowledge of him, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Christ. This knowledge increasing in us twice now is what has locked both grace and now peace and now his divine power. So if you're living a powerless life, a peaceless life, a graceless life, okay? If you are living any of these lives, I guarantee you, Mugzu, my brother, Vivi, man, I guarantee you that you are not living the Christian life. And this is what I want to explain. I want to talk about the Zoe life. I want to talk about the eternal life that Christ made available 2,000 years ago. I want you to understand, and let me start putting this across. The Christian does not live to die. The idea that kupumzika ni binguni, the idea that this world is not my home, all of those ideas are foreign to our Bible. They are not real because the eternal life, right? <laughs> Now, eternal life does not begin at death. Mm -mm. Eternal life begins now. In fact, I shared a video with some of my friends, and perhaps I will share the link after this. The, the life that Christ was talking about, he was talking about a life from a different system, a different realm. Uh, he, he was talking about that he has come and has ushered us into another life, into another existence, a life full of life that you, you may have life and have it in abundance. A, a life in abundance, I, I want you to understand, is what Peter is talking about. When he's talking a life where grace is multiplied, where peace is multiplied, a life where indeed even the divine power of God it's himself is multiplied. It is this, this divine divine power uh, 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 that gives us everything, listen, everything we need for life and godly living through the full knowledge. So there, there is a fullness, brothers and sisters, that exists for us. It does not exist in the age to come. Uh, it does not exist in life after death. It is to exist now. If you want proof that it is to exist now, why would God give you an eternal life which is not even vaguely resembling the life you are living now. That would be a very unfair exam because if you are going to spend four years being an engineer, five years being in engineering school, we fully expect that you will spend 20, 30, 40 years doing what you were taught in engineering school. And, and therefore, I, I contend with you to come up to the value of reasoning that this life that we are living now is a full dress rehearsal for the life we will continue living. Because Paul says uh, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. If faith, hope, and love continues, it tells me that there are things beyond the grave that I still need to believe for. I still need to hope for, and I still need to love to have. This is the reality. But beyond the grave, my brothers and sisters, there is faith. Beyond the grave, there is hope. Why? Because, as I said last week, the God we worship, the God we adore, will not stop dwelling in inapproachable light. But he will still want to continue to manifest his grand plans upon this eternal plane uh, called the universe. He will still want to show his grand plan through us. He still hopes to manifest how through the new city the city of jerusalem without a temple because the city is the temple by itself he still wants to project his desire his will upon the earth 
through the city and our brothers and sisters we are that bride of christ that came down from heaven we are the descendant reality of god we are what god wants to unveil we are who god wants to put on display we are what god desires to be seen the intention of god in making creation in all of its totality was to create a human being who would put on display god's grace uh, god's grace is not going to end at death who will put on display god's uh, uh, peace which will not end at death he will put on display God's power, which will not end at death. And therefore, the beginning of the manifestation of these things, uh, 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 of the provision of God, of his ability to stand by you and with you uh, through life, is not culminated at death, but it should be experienced by us as we live. This, this, this uh, uh, power, this grace, this peace, needs to be manifested through us so that the world and and creation itself will be put at peace because of what is on display uh let me read this uh uh for you uh, uh, uh. you know uh, i want to read from you from romans book of romans uh, uh 8 22 around there then we'll come back to second peter i want to show you uh, something i want you to understand who you are supposed to be who am i in god you know uh, 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 you need to understand and that one of my favorite songs it says who am i but the god of all the earth will care to know my name and care to feel my heart this is why this is why this is why now listen Now listen. Uh, let me let me. Uh, I, I just keep going back, uh, 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 and back and back. Huh? Let me read Romans eight twelve. Let me start there. So then, brothers, we are not debtors. We are debtors, but not to the flesh. We are not obliged to what carnal nature to live a life ruled by the standards set up by the dictates of the flesh. Now, a lot of people. When they read this, they read it only from a moralistic perspective. You need to understand the flesh is called the lower nature. Hey, Titus, with your brother. And the, 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 the spiritual life is called the higher nature. Please note the terms nature. Uh, nature means comes natural to means it is your 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 relaxing state when you close your eyes who are you now listen there is a nature called the flesh nature and there's a nature called the spiritual nature now the, the, the lesser nature is the flesh nature and let me explain to you what the flesh nature is like it is a lack of peace it is full of worries it is full of stress it is full of pressure it has no grace it has no god's favor and even worse it has no power and lastly it has a serious lack every time you look around there is a gap things are missing this is the lower nature because the lower nature separated from god has to struggle for everything the higher nature connected to god then receives freely because god gives freely so the higher nature which gives freely is 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 the opposite of the flesh it is not simply a moralistic statement and and moving away from the moralistic understanding this uh, then makes more sense we are not debtors to the flesh we are not bound to the flesh we are not bound to look for things we are not desperate we we are not we are not stuck in a place where we constantly have to look for things and seek things. No, 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 no. That's not where we are. We are in the place. You know where what happens in that place? We are in the place where we can walk by the Spirit, where we are called to a higher nature, a higher understanding, where God's grace, God's favor, and God's power meets with our hope, our love, and our faith to mix together to produce what god intended to show now if you live according to the dictates of the flesh you will surely die you will surely die this flesh here is what uh, 
is, uh, let me put it like this so you understand, is lack of peace. So if you live in a peaceless life, you will surely die. If you do not have faith, you will surely die. If you don't have hope, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, whom you are filled by, you are habitually putting to death and making extinct and deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. What does that mean? Listen, what that means is for as long as you're not at peace, for as long as you need the things of the flesh, then sin is your portion. Guaranteed. You're missing the mark with everything that you do. Now he says, if you're filled by the Holy Spirit and you do the dictates of the Holy Spirit, you will be putting to death. You will be receiving peace. You will be receiving power for all who are led of the by the spirit are sons of god all who are led by the spirit now i want you to understand what it is to be led by the spirit what it is to be led, led by the spirit is to live a life full of power is to live a life full of of the ability to dictate to your circumstances the will of god to live by the spirit of god is to live in a place where miracles are normal. You don't even call them miracles anymore. You call them life. This is the issue. Now, why am I emphasizing this scripture? I want us to understand that there are two lives. There are lives after the flesh. Let me explain to you lives after the flesh. You wake up every day because hunger is a threat. You wake up every day because homelessness is a threat. You wake up every day because relevance in life is a threat. You're scared, could lose your job, lose your career, lose your wife, lose, lose. Your, your life is led by fear. That is a flesh life. That is a flesh life. Those are the appetites of the flesh. But what are the appetites of the spirit? To please God, to do what God has required of us to do. These are the appetites. Uh, is the sound back on, guys? Is the sound back on? Oh, my. Let me just check. Polen, if the sound, uh, if you can hear me, let me know. Okay, yes means, uh, yes, Kevin, yes means you can hear me. Uh, is the sound back on? Munasema, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, yes means it's back on. All right, good. All right, all right, thanks, thanks. So now, uh, I was going to read you to James, okay? So, now, uh, now Hebrews 2.15, sorry, I, I confused. So Hebrews 2.15, what does it say? I want to just read it. Hebrews 2.15, I want you to see... Uh, we guy asante sana. Oh, but no chunji. Ochunji bande, my brother, how are you? Now listen. 
Hebrews 2.15. Christ set free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the haunting fear of death. All right? Now, understand one thing, all right? So that we are on the same page. But it is fear that drives the flesh. It is fear that drives most human beings, including the likes of even those who are as healthy, wealthy as, as Elon Musk, right? There is the haunting fear of death. It is fear that drives the flesh. So when the Bible speaks of flesh, I want you to understand it's not talking from a moralistic perspective only. It is speaking about what is the driving force in your life. The flesh is afraid of dying. The flesh is afraid of losing. The flesh wakes up and, and is driven by fear. Goes to work driven by fear. Goes does business driven by fear. Relates to people driven by fear. But there's another life called the spiritual life, the higher life. And what are its tenets? But you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit that produces sonship. In bliss which we cry, Abba, Father, we cry, Father, Father. Now, listen, why is this, why does it say we cry, Father, Father? Because, let me connect this for you. Because when we come to God, we cease from our neighbor. Again, this is Hebrews 4 that we sit down and we let go of labors and we hold on to the father the originator of rest and we tell the originator of rest we tell him you know what originator of rest you are my father we cry out to him we stop fearing we stop worrying and we cast all our cares all our burdens upon him. Indeed, he said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we cry in our spirits in that sense where we used to be afraid of death. But now because we are adopted of sons, we are not worried who will become president. We are not worried what will become of us tomorrow because we are assured that we are adopted as sons belonging to our heavenly father. It is this spiritual adoption that is called being born again, that you are born anew, born from a new family. You see, your physical father could only help you so much. Your natural upbringing could only help you so much. But now here comes a father who is limitless with power, limitless with mercy, with grace abounding, who has now ab adopted you as his son. And thus adopted as a son, you cry out, Abba, Father, instead of fear. Instead of being afraid, we trade in our fear. We trade in our sorrows. We trade in our pains to God, our Father. Right, and therefore the spirit himself, and I'm now at John uh, Romans 8, verse 16. The spirit himself testifies together with the old spirit, assuring us that we are children of God, we are adoptees, we belong to God. And what does it say? And if we are his children, then we are also heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must only only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. Now, if we are his children, we are also heirs. Why does it say heirs? Because the opposite of the flesh is inheritance. The opposite of fighting to have is to inherit. The opposite of waking up every day to hustle is to inherit. And this promise is what he said. He told the, the Jews that you shall live in fields you do not plant. You, 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 shall, you, shall, you, shall, you, shall, you shall eat of vineyards you do not plant. Live in houses you did not build. This is the promise of God. A lot of you even say it. You say the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. This is the correct order. <laughs> you guys will think I'm advocating for laziness, but that's not what I'm doing. Because the qualification of inheritance is that we must suffer, 
we must share in his suffering and suffer like Christ did. Please understand, like Christ suffered. There is suffering, by the way, that is not like Christ. So I will show you what godly suffering is in a minute. Okay? Now, for I consider that the sufferings of this present life are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred in us. This present life that is about to be revealed to us, in us, for us, and conferred on us. You see, the problem with how we've read these scriptures before is we've assumed Paul is talking about a future date. That this whole revelation is when Jesus returns. No, 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 no. Paul is speaking and he's saying that this revelation right? This revelation is a continual process because he has begun by saying anyone who is led by the Spirit of God is a son. So question, when did your sonship begin? When did your sonship begin? It began when you began to be led by the Holy Spirit. Not filled, led. How do you know you are led? When fear stops gripping your heart. In fact, let me tell you something. For as long as you're afraid, a lot of the times I've found that the thing you're afraid of and you're working so hard to get is put out of reach because you are not configured correctly in your heart to receive it. Okay? I, I don't know if that making sense. Comment if I am. All right? Now, for even the whole of creation, all of nature, waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's Son to be made known, waits for the revelation, the disclosing of their sonship. Okay? Now, <laughs> Not carefully, all of creation, all of creation is waiting for the revelation of who? Sons. These sons, who, okay, are being revealed to, revealed to us, in us, and for us. Glory is being done what? Revealed to us, is in us, it is for us, and it's conferred on us. This glory. This glory. You should be surrounded by a glory as we speak. As we speak. This glory that Adam lost and realized his nakedness. Now you know how he was dressed. I don't have time to go into it. Adam was unafraid to be naked because he was dressed in glory. Because there are no clothes that fell off him for him to realize he was naked. He did not look down and suddenly realize that he had body parts. No, no, no. The shame that he had is the shame that we have when our fears come true. We are naked. If you are afraid of getting divorced and it happens, you will be ashamed because you're naked. If you're afraid of poverty, when you don't have no money, we will not see you because you're naked. But God, in adopting us as sons, has predetermined that we should be dressed in glory. And it is this dressing in glory when we address creation, then creation must obey because it was created for sons. It was created for sons. I want to give you a key to unlocking sonship. I hear you asking, how do I live a glorious life? How do I shed of the shackles of fear. 
how do i become a person who's at peace how do i find this rest from every kind of moral unsettlement fleshly unsettlement how let me give you the answer when god created the earth this is what he did and i want to read for you uh, romans 8 from verse 20 for the creation was subjected to frailty to futility and condemned to frustration please listen carefully condemned to frustration you know my good friend and i Ghani, are doing a project and it's a project we, we thoroughly believe in in fact it came to both of us uh, in different visions in different ways how god speaks to us and we have worked hard now the other day i was praying about it because i i, I know its potential I know what it's about i asked god why is it so frustrating why 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 am i pulling my hair out now listen, listen carefully. Now, I want you to put your business, your career, all of those things that are frustrating you into this statement, into Romans 8.20. For the project, for the marriage, for the business, for the career, for your hopes and dreams, were subjected to frailty, to futility, condemned to frustration, not because of some intentional fault, but by the will of him who so subjected it. Okay. Remember I told you there is a way to suffer? Remember I told you I will show you how to live a glorious life. So let me take you through the journey so that we are on the same page. Everything you do, please hear me correctly, is subjected because all of creation, and I'm sure everything around us is creation, is subject to frailty. It's fragile, to futility. It is condemned to frustration not because of faults, intentional or otherwise, but by the will of God who so subjected it. Yet, it says, with the hope, yet with hope, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. So I am telling you that creation is subjected to frailty, not because of sin. No, no but by the will of whom him who so subjected it. Because when I look carefully, I don't see creation cast. I don't see it cast at all. It is subjected to frailty. Why? To frustration, to futility. And what happens, your marriage is frustrating. Your business is frustrating. Your project is frustrating. And you're scratching in your head and you're saying, oh Lord, what do I need to do? There is hope. Let me tell you where the hope is. That nature creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious kingdom of who? God's children. <laughs> Listen carefully. Nature is not waiting for God. Your business is not waiting for God. It is not waiting for a visitation. It is not waiting for Reinhard Bonke to come to Kenya the way he used to 
to touch your life and your life changes. No. Your marriage is not waiting for a day where God is sung in the right way and the prayer is made in the right way and boom, whoosh, everything is done. If you must live a godly life, if miracles must happen in your life, if your project must work, then you must understand all of nature is waiting for one who is revealed as a son of God. Your project is waiting for you 2.0. Your marriage is waiting for you 2.0. Your career is waiting for you 2.0. And this is the problem. I asked my father, I asked him, I'm like, Lord, you've given me so much success in very many fields. Why is this thing bugging me? Do I need a different business model? Do we need to hire different staff? Do we need another strategy? And my father told me, no. It needs you to put on the new man. And of course, my reference to the new man is based on the scriptures that I have shared before. So I'm not speaking to you as though I'm speaking to strangers. Now, this new man is the hope of nature. All of creation, you know how we say we're waiting for the appearance of Christ? The appearance of Christ is the Christ of the appearance of Christ is in me. This is the totality. The physical manifestation of Jesus Christ in his bodily return to earth is a manifestation of him being fully revealed in us and through us. And so this process is not waiting for the end. It is waiting for you. It is waiting for you to become. Because for if he says that as many as believed as sons of God, as many as, no, as many as believed he gave the power to become sons of God, and as many as are led by the Holy Spirit as sons of God, then this revelation of sons is now. It is not then. It is now. Who then are we talking about nature everything follows you into the revelation you walk through if you're taking notes and you want to remember anything else remember this it says creation itself will be set free from its bondage decay and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious kingdom freedom glorious freedom of god's children so all of the projects, all of the work you want to do will come to fruition if you walk into the freedom first. This is the spiritual living. The spiritual living works like this. I become the thing I want to be before it is. You must go ahead. You must, listen. Okay. Let me give you an example. That will make sense. Sorry, I'm moving about. The stool I'm sitting on is horribly uncomfortable. All right. Let me give you an example. Using Moses. Moses was to set the children of Israel free. And for 40 years, before he came to lead the children of Israel, Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. When he came back, he led them into the wilderness. He was a professional at surviving the wilderness. That's why when they were complaining, he was looking at the gate. What are you guys complaining about? This is life. Why? Because that's what he had seen. He had walked into that place. So the only freedom you can offer anything, your business, your marriage, your whatever, is freedom you yourself have walked into. It is glory you yourself have walked into. Are we together? So whatever it is you desire, you must become that thing. Then whatever is in your realm to influence will walk into that freedom with you. With you. So all of nature 
subjected to decay, has the hope of entering freedom, glorious freedom. So glory and freedom, that is God's children. So I must become the glory I want. I must become, in fact, husbands, you must become the wife you want. <laughs> you must become the husband you want. You must become that thing. This is how miracles work. Let me explain to you how miracles work. And, and, and as I know you're wondering, am I speaking about accessing virtue? That's what I'm talking about. But I am digging the foundation. You see how God works and how he programmed nature. He programmed nature to respond to man. If man is selfish and, 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 and he, is, he is being horrible, then the earth is programmed to reject him. The Bible is very clear. It says that the earth will spew you out of its mouth. But that same earth is programmed to accept and to obey and to follow the instruction of sons. If you're not a son, it kicks you out. If you're a son, it accepts you. But here's the thing you must understand. And I want to bring you a new angle to the sons of Sceva. The sons of Sceva were asked a question. They were told, Jesus will know. Paul we know. And who are you? <laughs> Hold on. You need, if you read the story correctly, you will realize that the sons of Sceva were habitual demon chasers. It was not their first rodeo. So the, 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 they had success before. And you need to understand at the time, there were many ways to get rid of demons. In fact, the book of Tobit, uh, the apocryphal book of Tobit, describes one of these demon-chasing uh, things. The sons of Sceva failed with this particular demon because they lacked identity. When it says sons of Sceva, it means they had heard about Jesus. They were not his son. They had heard about the works of Jesus through Paul. They were not his son. And they had not yet achieved sonship. And therefore, when the demon saw and understood that these are not sons, the demon kicked them out instead of them kicking it out. Why? Because they had not become the thing they were speaking. They were saying in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Whom Paul preaches. Not, not my Jesus. Not the Jesus I know. Not the Jesus I preach. Not the Jesus I have become intimate with. He, they were speaking like we do today. Many of us are sons of Sceva. How many times have you seen Christians say, in the name of Jesus, the Jesus of the world, the Jesus of my mommy and daddy. The Jesus of how many times? Uh, let us continue this journey. We're not even finishing the scriptures. Oh my. I'm not going to be able to finish the scriptures I want to, to do. So your knowledge, your sonship must be personal. Now verse 22. We know that the whole of creation of irrational creatures has been mourning together in the pains of labor until now. He said. All of creation, the pains of labor. These are the pains of production. Pains of productivity. The pains, the, the, the pressure of being able to bring fruit. Right? All of creation. And not only creation, but we ourselves too, who have and enjoy the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, a foretaste of the blissful things to come, grown inwardly as we wait for the redemption of our bodies. bodies. From what? From sensuality and the grave, which, which will reveal our adoption and manifestation as God's sons. 
So listen carefully. For in this hope we were saved. In this hope we were saved. But hope, the object of which is seen, is not hope. For what, how can one hope for what he already sees? But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and composure. So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know whatever, uh, we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit Himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads on our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. So, he's speaking. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what's in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is. Because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God on behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. We are assured. Now listen. We are assured and know that God being partner in our labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. That is the correct reading of Romans 8. So what am I saying? This is what I'm saying. God has made available grace, peace, his power to which we have his great promises, which provide for us everything we need for life and godly living. What we are lacking is the intimate knowledge of God, being so close to him, that we cease from our labor and we cry our Father. And as we cry our Father, he has decided that according to the increase of knowledge and character, he is going to give us the ability to do miracles. That's what I want to talk about. The ability to do miracles. The ability to do miracles is tied up into three things that I want us to understand very quickly. Number one, you must be adopted as a son, be set free from fears. Number two, you must increase in knowledge. You must increase. You must become the thing you want to see. You must be able to say, like Peter and John to the man by the temple, such as I have given to you, who are you? What do you have? It is your adoption as a son and your acceptance of sonship, my dear brothers, that then reveals and puts on display sonship. When this sonship, this adoption of sonship is done, then you are imbued with excellence, virtue. And it is this virtue then that is used to bring nature, to bring your project, to bring your business, to bring your marriage into the freedom you already experience. This is it. Now, I must explain in the time I have how all this is related to sufferings of Christ. It says, Christ learned obedience by the things he suffered. I want to, I want to read this for you. Hebrews 5.8 says, find it. Uh, 
So Hebrews 5 8. Let me read it for you. It says, Though being a son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those obeying him. Okay? Now, Christ was perfected. <laughs> Though he was a son, he had to learn obedience yeah. through the things that he suffered. Now, there are kinds of suffering that I want you to understand. This For suffering, number one, suffering because you did wrong. You did not plant, so you have no maize, you're suffering hunger, that's one kind of suffering, that's not the one we're talking about. Suffering because you, 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 you stole, now you're in jail, that's not the suffering we're talking about. The suffering number two, suffering without a cause. You're just suffering. You know? Then the suffering number three, suffering because of obedience. Now, that's the highest grade of suffering. That's A plus suffering. That's A star suffering. Now, what is A star suffering? A star suffering is this. To apply yourself to ensure that what God intended is brought onto the earth. Suffering unto obedience. It is hard, I tell you, because nature is subjected to frailty. It is very, very hard to do the things that God has asked us to do, I guarantee you. Very hard. But I'm also telling you the reason why the Holy Spirit bears with us, the reason why the Holy Spirit comes to our aid, the reason we have faith is because nature has been subjected to frailty, plus you. So you want to be fruitful, you labor to be fruitful. So we are joined, we, we, we are pushing, we are struggling, all of us, to be fruitful. So how do you become fruitful? This is how. And we'll continue this next week. You've got to become, you've got to become the thing you desire. Listen carefully. Let me go back to Hebrews and what it says of Christ. It says of Christ. Though being a son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. And what about that? <laughs> yeah? Though being a son, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those obeying him. So listen carefully. Christ entered first. So all his sons, brothers can enter. Okay? If you want something in your life, this is miracle 101. You must become the thing you are becoming, you, you want, you desire. So listen. Let me use the example of money because it is the simplest example you'll understand. I once told people that there is a bit of folly in our minds. The folly is this. If you gave someone today, and I'm sorry if you live in a bed sitter, do not take this with offense, but I'm giving you an example. If you you give someone today, someone, you know, people win houses, someone does that scratch thing wins a house, comes from a bed sitter to a four bedroom house. Unless he changes his idea of cleaning a house, his idea of furnishing a house, his idea of how much furniture is enough, that one bedroom, three bedroom house, he will live in one room. 
And when you go into the house, you will wonder, what happened here? If you want to know what I'm saying is true, look at Gideon Bugi Songo. Look at his house and tell me whether he ever left his bed sitter in his head. Okay? How God has fashioned things to be and why he says he cannot suffer a servant to be a king is this. He expects that before the glory comes, you become worthy of the glory. So if your dream is to be a millionaire, you must become that millionaire so that millions follow you. You do not follow millions. You hear what I just said? If you want a good marriage, you must have become that good marriage. So a good marriage follows you. You don't follow good marriage. You must become the thing you desire so that that thing can enter into your glory and your freedom. So I want you to change your mindset today. Miracles do not come anymore from God sending fire from heaven. No, 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 no. It comes now from God sending fire through you, which means I must become the fire if I hope to burn anything. You must become the miracle you want. Because the order is this, that nature must come into the realm which the sun already occupies. It is your job to bring nature into your realm. It is not nature to lift you up. When you are in the flesh, you needed a house, and that house gave you dignity. No, no, no. Now you are homeowner, and you give that house dignity. That is the difference between the fleshly thinking and the spiritual thinking. I am and therefore, the things around me enter into who I am. Welcome to who I am. Welcome to me. Why? Because God is desirous to manifest through me, through me, his will upon the earth. And therefore, if it is through me, I put it to you, that God must form me. He must mold me. He must press me to become the imprint he wants. And once I am that thing, then all of nature which was growing with me enters into the glory and the freedom that I have received. This is it. This is the key to a victorious life. That you must become that thing. And therefore, last week, when I ended by saying, put on the new man, put on the new flesh, now this is the practical understanding of it. If you run a duka, a shop, and you want to own a supermarket, you must begin to understand and know what is the difference between a supermarket and a kiosk. When you become that thing, when I see Brian, when you become that thing, then even if they kick you out of a house and you become a homeowner, that's who you are, another one must come from the earth because the earth is programmed to obey what is accurately the sun. Let me put it to you in perspective. The earth is like a program. Okay. It's like a program, a video game, if you will, a software, if you want to use the analogy, who, which has levels. And therefore, these levels are not ranked. They're just all over the place. So if you've unlocked level homeowner, for example, it does not matter what happens to you the earth will keep producing home ownership for you. It will keep producing it. It does not matter where you are thrown. If you've accessed leadership, you will have leadership wherever you go. It does not matter who appoints you or fires you. If you've unlocked wealth, it does not matter whether you are robbed blind because in you is the capacity potential to create wealth all the time. You must become where you're going. 
So Joshua saw the promised land. He saw it accurately. And he was the only one who had a different spirit. He had a promised land spirit. So even age couldn't keep him from his promise. So he led the children of Israel into the promise. So did Caleb. Caleb doing a better job than Joshua because he's the one who took over after Joshua. The point I'm saying is this, so that we understand each other. Become the miracle you want. Now, that is the work that you should do. We labor to enter into his rest. We labor to become what he created so that all these things will be added. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Then all these things will be added. If you want things to be added, you must become the kingdom into which <laughs> nature walks. Into. So every project, hear me correctly, walks into what you have. You don't walk into a project. If God promotes you, then everything in your realm is promoted. Do you have me? So you must become the son that all your groanings, plus the groanings of nature around you, you must become it. When you become that son, then everything that is natural, that is in your realm of influence, will enter into the level that you have unlocked. So then you can say to the circumstances in your life, silver and gold I do not even need to have. But such as I have given unto you, in the name of Jesus, project, business, career, marriage, rise up and walk because I have become that thing you ought to be. I am it. So that together we can put on display what God intended for the earth. That's how it's supposed to be. So this great promise is everything that you need for life and godly living which is made available to you can only be unlocked if you become the thing you desire. Okay? So, so, that's my time. I need to go find food in this wilderness, I mean. So, allow this hungry preacher to go eat. Like you, Sana, God bless you.